If you've never been to Dallas on a bright November day, let me paint you a picture. Imagine a radiant sun beaming down upon streets so full of bustle that if the city were a kettle, it would surely whistle. Dallas on the 22nd of November 1963 was exactly that kettle. And it wasn't boiling with just any ordinary tea, but with a brew of fervent anticipation and patriotic delight. The air itself seemed charged, almost as if the molecules had imbibed a bit too much caffeine that morning. Streets were lined with a jigsaw puzzle of faces, young, old, and everything in between, all eagerly waiting. The downtown skyline stretched tall, perhaps attempting to get its own peak at the day's stars. President John F. Kennedy and the ever-elegant First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy. As the presidential motorcade wove through the maze of Dallas streets, every honk, cheer and even the cooing of city pigeons seemed orchestrated to celebrate the young president's visit. Jackie, sitting gracefully beside her husband in an open car, was a vision in pink, a hue that by day's end would take on a weightier significance. She waved, he smiled, and for those moments all seemed right in the world. If Dallas were a stage, this was its grand performance, and the city played its part with gusto. But like a record getting an unexpected scratch, the jubilant hum of the scene screeched to a shocking halt. As the limousine eased its way into Dealey Plaza, shots rang out. Now, if you've ever been caught completely off guard, you'll know that the human brain does a quirky little thing. It tries to fit the unexpected into a comfortable box of the ordinary. Firecrackers? Some wondered aloud, their brains grappling for a benign explanation. But as the president slumped and Jackie's face contorted in horror, the grim reality sunk in. The plaza, only moments ago a scene of joyous celebration, spiraled into mayhem. People fueled by adrenaline and terror ducked, ran and shielded their loved ones. Camera bulbs flashed capturing an event that would be dissected for generations. And as sirens wailed and the motorcade sped away, a chilling silence descended. By the time the hands of the clock pointed to 1 p.m., hope had evaporated. The nation's beacon, JFK, was no more. And there, aboard the somber vessel of Air Force One, with the weight of a grieving nation pressing down on him, Lyndon B. Johnson took the oath of office. Beside him stood Jackie, her pink suit bearing the tragic stains of the day, a silent testament to the cataclysm that had befallen America. To say that day was pivotal is an understatement. It was a hinge upon which history swiveled, casting long shadows of doubt, questions, and a myriad of what-ifs that folks like you and me Dear theorist, still ponder over a cup of tea, or perhaps, if in Dallas, a strong cup of coffee. Lee Harvey Oswald, the lone gunman? Lee Harvey Oswald is, to say the least, an enigma wrapped in a riddle, sprinkled with mystery and served on a plate of bewilderment. You'd think that for someone so central to one of the most scrutinized events in modern history, we'd have a straightforward narrative. But, oh dear theorist, straightforward is not a term that applies here. Born in 1939 in the bustling city of New Orleans, Lee Harvey Oswald's early life wasn't exactly the stuff of fairy tales. In fact, if his life were a book, it'd be one of those you find in a dim corner of a second-hand shop, brimming with annotations and furrowed pages making you wonder just how it ended up there. He took a little vacation in the Soviet Union, as you do when you're a young lad unsure of life's direction, and even tried his hand at defecting, only to change his mind later. The Soviets, 
ever the gracious hosts said something along the lines of, All right then, off you pop. And Oswald was back in the USA, with a Russian wife and a penchant for drama in tow. Fast forward to 1963, and our Mr. Oswald found himself working at the Texas School Book Depository in Dallas. On that fateful November day, it was from this building's sixth floor that he allegedly fired those deadly shots. Within a couple of hours, Oswald, ever the elusive character, was arrested. Not for the assassination, mind you, but for the murder of a police officer, J.D. Tippett. Oswald's fingerprints on the murder weapon and his peculiar escape attempt made him the prime suspect in the assassination, and thus the stage was set for a trial of the century. But, and here's where our tale takes a twist more tangled than a ball of yarn after a kitten's had its way with it. Oswald never saw his day in court. Enter Jack Ruby, a nightclub owner with a flair for the theatrical. Just two days post the assassination, in the basement of the Dallas police headquarters and in full view of television cameras, Ruby shot Oswald. And just like that, the alleged assassin's lips were sealed forever. Oswald's sudden exit from the world stage left a cacophony of questions. Could this young man with his tumultuous past really have masterminded and executed the assassination of the most powerful man in the world all by himself? And if he did act alone, what drove him? A personal vendetta? A political motive? Or just an insatiable appetite for infamy? The burning queries didn't stop at Oswald. Why would Ruby a man with no clear ties to Oswald, abruptly decide to become judge, jury and executioner. Was it a spontaneous act of patriotic rage, or was there something murkier at play? While answers remain elusive, one thing's clear. Between the shots in Dealey Plaza and Ruby's dramatic intervention, the real story, if there ever was one, got more muddled than a Texan mud pie. For many, Oswald will forever remain the probable lone gunman, with that tiny sliver of doubt ensuring his enigmatic legacy endures. Alternative theories emerge. History, as you might have noticed if you've ever tried to piece together events from a family dinner last Christmas, tends to be muddier than a puddle in an English summer which, by the way, is very muddy. And when you throw in a presidential assassination, the waters don't just get muddied, they become a swirling whirlpool of speculation, theories, and I heard it from a friend who heard it from his uncle Dog Walker. Enter the infamous Grassy Knoll. Now, if you're imagining a peaceful hillock where poets muse and sheep graze, I'm afraid you're in for a surprise. This knoll, situated in Dealey Plaza, quickly became the epicenter of a storm of conspiracy theories. Witnesses claimed they heard shots emanating from its direction. Was there a second shooter? Was the knoll, with its picturesque white picket fence, a sniper's paradise? Over the years, this modest mound of earth has been analysed, scrutinised and theorised more than any other piece of landscaping in history. Just when you thought things couldn't get any odder, along came the Umbrella Man. On that sunny, fateful day in Dallas, amidst the waving crowds, one man stood holding a large black umbrella. Odd choice, you might think given that not a droplet of rain was in sight. Was he shielding himself from the Texas sun? Had he misread the weather forecast? Or was there a more sinister purpose? This lone individual, sticking out like a polar bear in the Sahara, became the subject of endless speculation. Some said he was signaling the shooters. Others proposed the umbrella concealed a weapon, a bit James Bondish, if you ask me. 
Later, the Umbrella Man was identified as Louis Stephen Witt, who claimed his odd accessory was a form of protest against JFK's father's appeasement policies. Talk about a nuanced political statement. Now, if you're the sort who enjoys an elaborate conspiracy theory as much as a rich, layered trifle, then you're in for a treat. Over the years, many fingers have been pointed in various directions, each more tantalizing than the last. First up, we have the Mafia. Some say they were peeved at the Kennedys for cracking down on organized crime. Next, there's the CIA. Because no conspiracy theory buffet is complete without the main course of shadowy government agencies with hidden agendas. The plot thickens with whispers of disgruntled anti-Castro-Cuban exiles, upset over the Bay of Pigs debacle. It's almost as if half the Western Hemisphere had a bone to pick with poor JFK. While most of these theories are heavier on drama than concrete evidence, they do showcase humanity's infinite capacity for imagination. And who knows, somewhere in that labyrinthine mess of theories, there might just be a kernel of truth. In the end, though, as with many such moments in history, the JFK assassination remains a canvas upon which society projects its fears, its mistrust, and its unending quest for the tantalizing thrill of the what-if. The Warren Commission and Skepticism In the aftermath of the JFK assassination, the US government, with all its boundless wisdom and equally boundless paperwork, birthed the Warren Commission. Led by Chief Justice Earl Warren, this group was entrusted with a task that would make anyone's head spin faster than a top on a polished floor, unravel the intricate web of the Kennedy assassination and present the truth to a rattled nation. Now, in an ideal world, one would imagine this team assembled like a league of extraordinary gentlemen, and they were indeed all gentlemen, sitting in dimly lit rooms, poring over evidence with magnifying glasses and occasionally exclaiming, Eureka! But real life, as we often find, is slightly less cinematic. After about 10 months, which in government time is equivalent to hastily slapping together a sandwich during a lunch break, the commission produced an 888-page report. Its verdict? Lee Harvey Oswald, that bewildering young man with a history as complex as a Tolstoy novel, acted alone. No second shooter, no grand conspiracy, just one man, one rifle, and a tragic trajectory. Ah, but dear theorist, humans are curious creatures. We're the same species that insists on pushing a door even when there's a giant sign screaming, PULL! So it's hardly surprising that the public looked at this neat official narrative and said, Well, that seems a bit too tidy, doesn't it? Many found it hard to believe that such a seismic event, one that shook the core of American society, could be the work of a single individual. Where were the shadowy figures, the intricate plots, the Machiavellian machinations. The Commission's report, thick enough to serve as a formidable doorstop, was seen by some as rushed, though, to be fair, anything less than a decade's investigation would probably have felt too hasty for such a profound tragedy. Critics argued there were gaps, discrepancies, and perhaps even a reluctance to probe certain uncomfortable avenues. This skepticism wasn't just confined to the fringes, even notable public figures voiced their doubts. And while the average Joe on the street might not have read all 888 pages, who could blame them? A pervasive feeling lingered that maybe, just maybe, there was more to the story. Over time, this skepticism would lead to numerous further investigations, books and films, 
each trying to piece together that fateful day in Dallas. Some theories were plausible. Others, well, let's just say they'd be more at home in a Hollywood script-writing session. But at the heart of all this is a testament to humanity's relentless quest for truth, especially when confronted with events that forever alter the course of history. As they say, nature abhors a vacuum. And in the absence of clear, indisputable facts, imagination, speculation, and yes, skepticism will always rush in to fill the void. The Warren Commission, for all its earnest efforts, found itself not just battling the shadows of that tragic day, but also the shadows of public doubt, proving once again that in the arena of public opinion, even the most official explanation can sometimes feel unofficial. Enduring Impact and Cultural Legacy The JFK assassination. It's the mystery that, like that one odd sock that keeps turning up in your laundry, refuses to go away. And, like any good conundrum wrapped inside an enigma, nestled within a riddle, it has fascinated, baffled, and occasionally maddened those who dared to dive deep. As the years roll on and technology leaps ahead, we find ourselves armed with tools that the good folks back in 1963 would have considered akin to wizardry. Computer simulations, for instance, have been utilized by enthusiasts and experts alike, trying to reconstruct that fateful day in Dealey Plaza. And while these digital recreations can offer enlightening perspectives, it's somewhat ironic that we use ultra-modern tech to debate a half-century-old event. It's a bit like trying to determine the authenticity of a Van Gogh using an Instagram filter. Enlightening? Yes. Conclusive? Well, that's another story. If there's one thing the human species loves, it's a good tale. And the JFK assassination offers intrigue in spades. Hollywood, being Hollywood, couldn't resist. Enter films like Oliver Stone's JFK, which while dramatically compelling, might make a historian twitch involuntarily. But it's not just the silver screen. From documentaries that promise new insights, usually aired during rating season, to books thicker than a brick, the tale of that day in Dallas has been retold, rehashed, and occasionally reinvented. And while every interpretation has its merits, and its critics, they all underscore one thing, our collective obsession with that moment in history. As the saying goes, if JFK's assassination didn't exist, pop culture would probably have invented it. So, what is it about this particular moment that's so alluring? Beyond the tragic loss of a charismatic leader, the JFK conspiracy man. taps into a so deeper wellspring within the American psyche. Perhaps it's a distrust of neatly packaged official narratives, or the unsettling feeling that behind every tragedy, there's a shadowy cabal pulling the strings. Or maybe it's just that innate human desire for a tantalizing mystery, especially one with so many colorful characters and plot twists. The event becomes a mirror, reflecting society's broader anxieties, suspicions and doubts. It stands as a testament to the persistent and often maddeningly elusive quest for truth. And as with all such quests, the journey often becomes as significant if not more so, than any potential destination. In a way, the JFK assassination, with its myriad theories, controversies and debates, serves as a poignant reminder. It's an emblem of the human condition. Our need to understand, to make sense of the inexplicable, and perhaps above all, to craft narratives that help us navigate the complexities of a world that often seems as mystifying as it is mesmerizing. In the end, 
Whether one believes in a lone gunman or a sprawling conspiracy, the JFK assassination remains an indelible chapter in the annals of history and imagination. A tale that, regardless of where the truth may lie, will likely continue to captivate and confound for generations to come. If you enjoyed this conspiracy theory deep dive, you can buy my book Conspiracies on Amazon and order the full audiobook on Audible, where I delve even deeper into the labyrinth of modern myths, guiding you through a mesmerizing journey of the most tantalizing conspiracy theories of our age. Links in the description below.